Hey guys, how's it going? This is Waj from the MW Technology Channel on YouTube. And in this video, we'll be doing a full review of the P2815 Q from Dell. Now, if you haven't heard of this product, this is one of the first 4K displays from a big reputable company that makes a lot of popular monitors. Certainly Dell is one of the biggest ones out there at an affordable price. And the big thing, this is the ultra HD standard or 4K standard of monitors that you're gonna be seeing in the next couple of months and years. Now, obviously one of the biggest highlights of the product is its price tag, which is fairly affordable for most people who are interested in getting a higher end displays. Now, there are some huge disadvantages to the display if you're uh, used to a 1080p display and we'll definitely talk about some of those disadvantages as there are some huge advantages to having this ultra HD resolution when we talk about some of the capabilities you have with having a monitor or display that has this massive resolution of almost 4,000 pixels wide you definitely get to take advantage of some of the stuff that you do on a day-to-day -day basis especially if you're a user that likes as much resolution as possible now another thing that everyone should know about is this is not the cheapest 4K display that you can get in the market. Currently for about $399, under $400, you can get a 4K display from Amazon. It's a C-Key 39 inch 4K display. It has a relatively this similar specification of 30 Hertz at 4K. Uh, although you're getting obviously a unknown kind of brand, the reputation of C-Key is, it doesn't even compare to what Dell has done in the past. And I'm sure the color accuracy and overall build quality and conveniences that you get out of this particular 4k display is certainly better okay so the first thing that we're going to talk about is the specifications of the p2815q now this monitor is the cheaper version to the ultra sharp series that they have available right now that monitor is i believe a 24 inch this is a 28 inch monitor with a native resolution of 3840 by 2160 and that's a pretty standard resolution for 4k at 16 by 9 aspect ratio it is a TN panel so unfortunately it has no in-plane switching capabilities no IPS technology in there so it's limited in terms of the angles but you can view it at around 160 to about 170 degrees for optimal viewing but ideally it's quite narrow than that you do see some color shifts as soon as you get at extreme ends of the monitor so it's definitely not as versatile as a real IPS display now one thing I do like about the monitor is its capabilities and connections that it has. It has a full swivel stand, which is really convenient. You can fully rotate it to a uh, horizontal position or vertical position, depending upon what your needs are and what you typically want to use this monitor in terms of orientation. Another great thing is that it does have a standard vase mount connection, so you can mount it to a desk stand or to the wall. In terms of connections, it includes a plethora of connections. You have HDMI 1.4 capable of full 4K resolution at 30 Hertz. You do also have a mini display port or a Thunderbolt connection in the Apple world, which is also capable of obviously doing 4K. And then you have two regular display port connections. One is an in and one is an out. And the other cool thing is that it does have a uh, for USB 3.0 hub built into the monitor and you can uh, hook up your downlink cable to get full USB 3.0 speeds. Uh, so very convenient and fully featured in terms of most things. You do also have an option to hook up their sound bar to the monitor. So if you want to use uh, the sound bar that they uh, want you to kind of pair this monitor, you can as well. So, uh, but uh, you obviously can use any speakers. Okay, so let's see how the P2815 Q compares against a very similarly specced Dell monitor. This is my own E2414H, which is a TN panel like the 28 inch, but it is 1920 by 1080 at 24 inches. 
Now here is the kind of grand example of why somebody would want a 4K monitor with this high of a resolution and that's basically screen real estate. As you can see over here on the 28 inch we have Premiere Pro running, we have a full instance of Lightroom and Photoshop, we have some photos and also my Google Drive up there and it's all viewable, all very clear and so much more versatility and overall screen real estate available to me on the 4k monitor now as soon as we drag the photoshop window onto our 1080p monitor you can see that we pretty much don't even have any room for anything else now obviously we can shrink it down and probably do a couple more things but as you can see over here we have basically the power of four 1080p monitors in one display and it's more versatile than that but because if you have multiple monitors displays you have to deal with bezels and they're physically different monitors with this it's all one large display display and you can infinitely customize it to your preferences. Now obviously with this particular Dell 4K monitor, you only have 30 hertz at that 4K resolution. Our 24 inch 1080p is running at 60 hertz. Now we can't see that difference on camera because we are shooting the video at 30 frames per second, but you really have to be here in real life to look at these two monitors in terms of how they deal with motion and cursor movements to kind of get a good feel of 30 hertz versus 60 hertz. Obviously the 60 hertz is better, it's much more smoother. You have a better sense of control and the just sensation of what you're used to is just normal at the 60 hertz refresh rate with 30 hertz everything is halved in terms of frame rate and most things now if you're doing a lot of photo editing and video editing that's not going to be much of an issue but you are going to notice that your cursor is not as smooth and as responsive as you would typically experience at a 60 hertz refresh rate now as i mentioned before movies tv shows most online video content is shot at 30 frames per second or lower than that so that's not too much of an issue but if you're a gamer this is pretty much a no-go at the 4k resolution you can only experience uh, any frame rate whether you have a really high-end graphics card that's doing 100 frames per second or 33 frames per second you're always going to experience basically 30 frames per second you're always going to be bottlenecked now again keep in mind you can drop that resolution to 1080p and experience your normal 60 frames per second but again the whole reason why you're spending this much money and this whole video is about 4 4K and there's no point in getting a 4K monitor and using it at 1080p. Now let's briefly come back to our comparison and you'll notice in terms of the backlight bleeding itself it's fairly even and consistent relative to the 24 inch. There are some hot spots here and there but it's typical of what you would find on a consumer grade panel. Now here's probably one of the biggest disadvantages of the monitor straight out of the box and that's the color balance of the pure white that the monitor can replicate. Now importantly both monitors are in the exact same setting. They're both set on the standard picture mode and the color balance is exactly the same. Now additionally the camera has also been custom white balanced to get the most representative whites in this room condition. So what you're looking at is the pure white comparisons between these two monitors and you can see that the 24 inch is way better in terms of representing a more truer white and there's a huge shift towards a kind of a reddish green side on the 28 inch UHD monitor from Dell. Now of course this isn't the end of the world because you can calibrate the 28 inch to match a more representative color but you're never going to get true accurate colors because it's limited to only 8 bits and it doesn't have a reference grade panel inside so it's definitely no ultra sharp but you can color calibrate it to be more representative just out of the box it's not not as good as even the other consumer grade Dell monitors. Now here as we get to some highlights of the overall image quality of the UHD panel. It is very good in terms of overall color responsiveness, vibrancy and overall image quality is pretty good. It's very much similar to the 24 inch as you can see over here and the sharpness that you get out of the 4K certainly surpasses the image quality of a standard 1080p model in terms of sharpness but the 
color response is fairly good. It's obviously not as accurate as you would want, uh, especially if you're going to do some work with printing or you need critical color analysis. You definitely want to calibrate it. But again, you might want to just invest in the Ultra Sharp series if you're that much of a professional. But uh, overall, definitely not a bad photo editing and video editing monitor for most people. Now, one thing I do have to mention is that this is my first experience with any 4K display, any 4K monitor, period. So this is definitely a novel experience for me. And I'm definitely enjoying that uh, amount of real estate that you have with that super high resolution and uh, just the clarity of photos, images, and text are just incredible. Even videos look really great at this higher pixel density level. And certainly one of the issues that you're going to have with this higher resolution monitor is regarding the visual strain. Because now you're looking at something that's a lot higher in terms of pixel per inch, in terms of pixel density, your eyes are going to be concentrating on smaller and smaller prints. And if you do a lot of web surfing or anything regarding text uh, reading or anything like that, you are going to have to come a little bit closer to the monitor and to basically see it because the pixels now are so small when they're scaled at the one to one ratio. Now, obviously a solution of this is you can find kind of a medium kind of happy setting. And this is what Apple does with their retina displays. They basically double each pixel resolution of the whole OS. So you can have it in kind of a retina style where the size doesn't change too much in terms of you still have enough in terms of doing all sorts of things in terms of screen real estate but it's not so small that you're straining your eye all the time and therefore weakening it further. I already have bad eyesight, so it's just going to get worse. Uh, so I'm not too worried about that. Obviously, long-term effects we'll see down the road as I use this monitor further. Uh, but uh, if Windows, and obviously I think with Mac OS X, you can do this with this monitor, you can find a happy medium between having higher pixel density and having a good amount of real estate in terms of doing your work. And obviously this is going to be a personal factor. Everyone will have a different preference. Some people will just love that one-to-one -one resolution where they can just max out that setting and completely use that giant real estate to as much as possible and they don't mind coming in and they have good eyesight so they don't care about uh, visual acuity loss or anything like that. Um, and there might be some people like my brother, he does not like the 4K experience at all. He would rather prefer the 1080p experience because it's easier to read and the text isn't so tiny. Now one of the last things that we're going to talk about is where does this monitor kind of fit in into the ecosystem of 4K? Well, it's kind of hard to pin it down because on one end, it's certainly not the cheapest. Uh, again, the $400 C key offers a lot of the different aspects of this monitor in terms of 30 hertz and the full 4K resolution uh, at a, a very competitive price tag, better than what Dell can offer, even at this pretty uh, competitive price tag. And yet it's so significantly more affordable than even Dell's Ultra Sharp series, which is going for way over $3,000. And I'm sure the price is going to get better, but that's really a professional grade monitor that has reference colors and uh, it's more made for people who do color grading and uh, critical uh, photo work and things like that. So obviously you can calibrate this monitor to get better colors and that's something I would definitely recommend anybody doing uh, if they're interested in having a, you know this monitor and doing some professional level stuff with it and to have a representative colors as best as possible that's really with any display and it'll soon be better than the Seeky in terms of that because it has great capabilities of uh, color calibration. I think the big decision will be definitely that 30 hertz factor now to me it's kind of uh, again another dilemma because I do love that display and I love the price tag. I'm not going to get anything near this price tag if I want 60 hertz at 4K. Both Asus and Dell offer a 60 hertz 4K display but again the price is quadruple so 
you're going to have to take that into account when looking at this display. Now, on a day-to-day -day basis, I think you're definitely going to have to try it out and see for yourself. The video does not make it justice because, again, we're shooting this at 30 frames per second. So you're not going to see that. Even if I shot it at higher frames per second, it's not a good representative test. You really have to see it in real life. For my personal account, though, I do say that I can live with it. I'm a casual gamer, and if I really need to game, I'll just do it on a, on a different display that has 60 hertz. And the cool thing about this display is you can bump it down to 1080p and have 60 hertz. So that's not a big issue. And there's lots of 27 inch monitors that have 1080p resolution. So it is pretty versatile, but the Seeky can also do that too. And it's a lot cheaper, but you get the brand and you get the better color and build quality and conveniences. But on that guys, I hope I give you a good understanding of how this thing is in terms of performance and usability. I do have to say that this P2815Q monitor definitely has a lot going for it. Obviously uh, down the road, uh, this is definitely a generational product. Next year we will have something that's probably cheaper and can do 60 Hertz at 4K. So many of you might probably just want to wait until the technology gets cheaper and get people who have extra money to burn to get these monitors so the price can come down uh, but uh, the price is coming down for sure a lot of people are going to be getting the, these displays 30 Hertz is not the end of the world um, it is flexible you can get different resolutions at 1080p to do 60 Hertz if you need to play games or whatever but if you're doing most things for a kind of prosumer level I think this is definitely passable and certainly a great experience. And when you live in the world of 4K, it's hard to go back to 1920 by 1080. But on that, guys, if you have any questions about anything I talked about in this video, please leave that on a comment down below. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, Majid Sayed too. We'll see you later, take care. The P2815Q, now what's special about this monitor is it's very consumer friendly price, it's very affordable. 